Welcome back to the Courage Within podcast with your host, Libier. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to ask God for forgiveness. I know for me, this has been one of the best things I've ever, ever, ever learned how to do. And there is no better feeling than being forgiven. You know, when you owe a big debt and somebody says, hey, I forgive you, or hey, I'll excuse that um, what you owe, you feel so so overwhelmed with gratitude and I feel like that's the feeling that we get when we actually receive Jesus for our hearts as a, as the Lord and Savior of our hearts right we we know that the debt that he paid on the cross was the thing that we couldn't do on our end and I believe without a shadow of a doubt that if you let Jesus be the Lord of your heart and the Savior of your soul he will teach you about you in ways that you didn't even know you needed. And and some of the ways that I've learned more about God have been times that I have had a lot of pride and God has humbled me. God has graciously humbled me and given me the opportunity to be a different person, right? From my sinful self. I get to rejoice in the fact that, man, even though I make tons of mistakes, I can fall back on the grace of Jesus today. And not just today, forever, for eternity. I get to fall back on the grace and mercy that was that was purchased on the cross for me. Um, I want to read to you out of Psalm 51. This is one of David's prayers and, and repentance prayers that he prays to God after he does something horrible. But because he did something bad, he felt ashamed. And then he went and did more bad things because he felt ashamed of those bad things, right? And I feel like we can empathize with David. In the psalm here, David displays a a beautiful way of sharing how to say sorry to God for when we do something wrong. So David, after he does this horrible thing to Bathsheba, he goes then and kills her husband because he he feels awful about what he did. I'm sure he feels a lot of shame. And then he tries to cover it up so he won't be found out. And guess what? All his trouble just completely compounds on him. And I know that I myself have felt like David. I have felt like my sin, my mistakes, my failures, all of the things that have weighed on my heart have compounded effect into feeling like my heart is full of disgustingness, right? Like my heart is full of deceit and harm and and grossness. And I don't dare go to God because I feel too much too much weight. The weight of my sin feels like too much, right? That is the perfect time to go to Jesus. That is the time to go to God in repentance. And we are freed when we go and kneel at the cross and say, Lord, forgive me for my mistakes. Forgive me that I did this. Yes, maybe to someone else, but essentially when we sin and when we make mistakes, we sin against God. And the beautiful thing about it is that not only does he meet us in that comfort, right? He comforts us in our repentance. He also lets us understand that that is why he called Jesus to be the savior of our of our soul. He called Jesus to be the 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 one that sinned zero zero times. Jesus did not make one mistake. Jesus did not sin one time. Jesus did not make, you know, any awful choices. We can relax and say, "Lord, thank you that Even though I don't deserve it, you have given your son to give me freedom and you give me the, 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 the way out. You give me a way that I can maybe not feel so ashamed and so uh, terrified of, of the things that are hidden in my heart. Let's read the Psalm to see what David was feeling at that time. Okay. David writes in Psalm 51, have mercy on me. Oh God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you. Only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret hearts. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow." Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. This is my favorite verse. 
verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I love this psalm so much because it takes us through the gamut of our humanity when we make mistakes, right? And when we're able to go to the cross and ask for forgiveness to God, right? First, we acknowledge that we made a mistake, right? We acknowledge that we're sinners and that there is darkness and hidden parts in us that we don't like. There's there's depravity in us. There's challenges and difficulty and things that we don't know how to combat sometimes right and we all fall short of the glory of God the Bible says so there's not one of us that isn't struggling with some sort of difficulty challenge mistakes of life um, bad attitudes think about it we are all 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 in need of a savior and what I love most about David's psalm is that he goes and he goes before God and says I have sinned against you please don't even think about my sin anymore but I have I acknowledge that you are God and that I have sinned against you yes he sinned against Bathsheba he sinned against her husband right by murdering him but what he's recognizing is that not only did he sin against those people but mostly he sinned against his God who he loves David loved God and God even after David did all these things God would call David and say, David is a man after my own heart. God delighted in David, even though he had so many mistakes that he made. So you and I can rest assured that we are going to be loved by God no matter what, whether we do good things or bad things. What I love about the psalm as well is that it teaches us, not only does it show us that we must repent of our sin, we must turn away from our sin, not to say that we are never going to sin again, just saying when we make mistakes, bowing down to God and saying I'm sorry is so fruitful because we get to sit there at Jesus's feet and feel his compassion his mercy his grace and feel empowered to live differently hopefully hopefully we're not entangled by the sin that is entangled us in the past right we get to learn from those mistakes and learn with God that with him he loves us no matter what and that my gosh I don't know what else propels me more to be obedient to God than the love that I feel that he gives me that I don't have to prove or I don't have to earn. This love that is unshakable is given to you and me without having to prove, without having to coerce or manipulate. Like God just loves you and me. He loves us. He loves us and he's never going to leave us. What I love about David in that Psalm 51 is that he displays the gamut of being human, right? We make mistakes and we really do feel so guilty about it. Sometimes we, we might f- fester in the, the, the feelings of shame and condemnation, but Jesus doesn't want that from you or I. When we've made a mistake, we can move past it by moving into repentance with him and asking him to forgive us and allowing Literally, like what I I love what the psalm says is I love in verse 7, it says, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Sometimes we just need a emotional bath. You know what I mean? Like a mental and emotional and spiritual bath. We just need God to to make us feel squeaky clean. And we can't do that if we're just going by every single day, being busy, not taking time to just pray, ask God to help us, ask God's wisdom, and also ask God's forgiveness, right? I love that feeling of I was dirty and God cleansed me. Um, I also really love the fact that he talks about creating me a clean heart. Our hearts can be deceitful. Our hearts can be not good, right? Our hearts aren't always going to lead us in the right direction, but Jesus is. So when we give and surrender that part of our self to God, he is going to make it clean because he's the only one that can do that, right? We cannot make our hearts clean. We cannot cleanse our hearts. We cannot, we cannot do, you know, a cleanse, make a juice cleanse uh, and then have our hearts be cleaned. It doesn't work that way. Only Jesus can clean the heart. Only Jesus, God and the Holy Spirit can do that work within us. So we need to be acknowledging that and asking God to do that. And then what I love even most about that is that he says, and renew a right spirit within me. Sometimes we don't have a right spirit in us. We have a wrong spirit. We have wrong thoughts ruminating in our head. We have the wrong attitude toward God. We have the wrong attitude about our lives. We can be really snarky, stinky, resentful, unforgiving, 
doubtful, fearful. We can be prideful. There could be so much sin that just weight weighs on our heart that we are separated from God. Not that God is away from us, but we feel so much sin that we feel ashamed to be around God, right? So when we come to repentance and we come to ask for forgiveness, God says, yes, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive you time and time again. Look at my, look at my hands. The evidence of me forgiving you is in the scars of my hands. I have broken the curse of sin and death over you by dying on a cross and being raised again three days later. God is saying, I have victory over your difficulties. I have victory over your addiction. I have victory over that feeling of of helplessness and, and even hopelessness. I have victory over that addiction. I have victory over that illness. I have victory over that mental struggle that you're going through. I have victory over those thoughts of worthlessness and fear. I have victory over the way that you think that you are not good enough. With Jesus, you are enough. In Jesus, we are enough. Away from Jesus, we are not. In Jesus, we are enough. And we get to decide to be have the authority to claim that about ourselves every single day. I think I need to claim that to myself every single day because I forget. I forget so easily. Oftentimes I wake up in the wrong spirit with my heart being so burdened by all the sin and mistakes that I have made that I feel unequipped to be around a holy God. But if I turn my gaze upon Jesus and I ask for forgiveness, God gives me his forgiveness and more. When you sit at the feet of the living God, you are sitting in, you are abiding on holy ground, you guys. Let me tell you something. Anytime you take time to pray, to to meditate on God's word, to journal to God, a letter to God about what you're feeling, when you read your Bible, when you worship, when you write songs about God, anytime you do anything that has to do with God, You are abiding and you are witnessing and you are entering the presence of a holy God. He's not just some nebulous thing. He is God with you. Emmanuel, Jesus is your God with you. He's with you, but he's also so supreme that he is for you in a way that you have never even imagined. You have the power of the the most high. If you ask Jesus into your heart, he gives you the Holy Spirit and you possess more power inside of you than what you could possibly imagine. So today, you can repent, you could ask God to forgive you, and you can move on in your life knowing that Jesus sees you through the sacrifice he made for you. God sees you through the sacrifice his son made for you. And the Holy Spirit empowers you to walk in the way that is pleasing to God. Let me pray for you before I go. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving my friends authority over their lives. God, help them to know, Lord, that they have power with their words, that there is power in what they say, God, that they would align with you and your word for their lives, God, that they would be like David and be humble enough to to ask for your forgiveness, Lord, and to ask you to cleanse their hearts, Lord, clean our hearts, God. Give us a new heart, Lord. And ignite a right spirit within us. Help us to have the right spirit to, to, to lead this life that you have given us, that you died to give us, Lord. Help us to not ever underestimate the power that is within us when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God. Help us to wake up to the fact that we have your Holy Spirit guiding us, comforting us, helping us, giving us every step of the way a comfort and joy. Lord, your joy is our strength. Let your joy be our strength today. If we are not joyful today, God, let your joy be our strength. Help us to be joyful because you've called us on this earth and you've given us your living hope. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I really pray and hope that this podcast helped you today. Thank you so much for listening. Send it to a friend that might need encouragement and I will talk to you next week. God willing.